So um, this part um, we've um, prepared together with Katrin, but you will, um, I will do the talking. I, me, Dana will do the talking. So in, the, in this um, second session of today, we will be looking more in details into um, submission of different types of data with a huge focus on metadata. So we will, let's uh, go, go a little bit in deeper what we started um, yesterday um, with Flavia. There will be a little bit of repetition. We will be uh, in this part um, answering several questions. Uh, so when to submit your data, you probably already know, but what do we need you to submit and in which form, how? So this will be, let's say the focus and also I will give you some tips, what kind of information you can uh, receive as a help, what kind of templates we have and um, how to how to access these tools. Just a repetition from yesterday, but it's uh, never enough, uh, never enough to say this. Uh, so when do we submit, uh, when, when do you need to submit your data? So generally as early as possible. So if your data set is complete after creating it um, and is equipped also all, all your um, metadata related to this data are available, which is mostly the case, put it together and submit it before you forget it. Uh, and uh, you don't need to be worried that it's maybe submitted too early because uh, of course we offer the moratorium. So the data is safe, it's published, it can stay um, protected for, one, two years, uh, no problem. Um, Donna, the, yeah? Donna, may I interrupt? Um, I'm not sure if it's only the case for me, but I just see a black screen actually. Ah. Do you do you all see the slides? I see, I see the, the slides. slides. Mm -hmm. Oh, then yeah. it seems to be my problem. All okay, right. thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry for that, Lars. I'll just continue <laughs> <laughs> and nevertheless. Okay, so the moratorium is always uh, an option. And um, the latest you should uh, submit your data is at the same time when you're submitting your manuscript uh, based on these data because A, um, the journal editors will typically uh, ask you to provide the data related to um, to this um, paper in some uh, repository. And we need um, sometimes as much time as a journal publisher to publish your data. So for you to, for these two entities uh, appearing at the same time, the latest point is uh, when you submit your uh, paper. So, and uh, now the next we'll be talking about why is metadata so important and uh, where do we show the metadata in Pangea um, at the different levels. And I will uh, show you several examples because of course we have different types of data in Pangea. So maybe you will find at least one example that you can uh, relate to. Um, and okay, so what is metadata at all? Uh, so it's a um, descriptive data about, uh, about your data set. And uh, the metadata are very important to give us com context to your data, to make it understandable to everyone, also not for the data creator. And uh, actually, I would go as far as to say that without these metadata, your data are of no use to anyone. And in the end, after you've forgotten <laughs> all the background knowledge, not even to yourself. And um, that's metadata, that's what makes the data fair as well. And so I'll just repeat from yesterday what kind of metadata are important for um, data from earth science uh, and, bio uh, and biology research uh, and that we specialize on. Um, Someone has the microphone on, seems like. So um, what was measured or what was calculated? And that's described by the parameter name and unit. 
who produced the data. Uh, so this is typically the information about the authors of the um, data set, PIs of the individual uh, measurement series, and um, maybe also um, publications um, related to uh, the data set, other publications related to the data set. Then uh, where? So typically the important um, metadata are latitude and longitude when we're talking about um, data coming from Earth environmental research. And um, we mustn't forget about the, the third um, dimension. So depth or altitude, uh, elevation. Um, then comes the um, metadata describing when. So typically that would be a timestamp, date and time. Um, but in, um, um, in, because we are also dealing with lots of geological data, it could be also geological age, for example. And how, so these are metadata describing the methods and devices, um, exactly. And uh, a complete and kind of standardized, harmonized set of these metadata is what actually makes the your data interoperable and reusable. So now we'll look at different levels where the metadata are um, present in Pan uh, Pangea in the data set. So actually metadata, uh, some of the metadata can be assigned to a si uh, individual um, uh, data point, which is very important to provide the context. So if you have a data point, it can be a numeric data point, for example, 3.14 can be anything, virtually anything. So it can be temperature measured somewhere on the earth. It can be a, an average uh, age of a child in a kindergarten group. Mm, so an important context is what is the parameter measured and what is the unit? And uh, secondly, where on earth it was measured, latitude, longitude, and also the third uh, dimension, elevation, and uh, when. So these are typically the set of metadata uh, associated with a single data point in Pangea. So in ideal case, and mostly it is the case, um, you can actually uh, describe each single data set in Pangea with all these metadata. Now we are talking about, um, let's say, uh, a series, time series uh, or data series, which would typically be uh, one column in a, in a table, for example. So um, this would be several measurements uh, done over the time or at different places. So these are already uh, described individually by a set of metadata. But in addition to that, for this uh, column in your table, we assigned maybe a responsible person, a PI. We can describe uh, this column by measurement method, device, and also by method, uh, maybe uh, mm, like paper that the method was based on uh, publication, standard operation procedure, um, something that is uh, relevant for how this whole time series was created or see, measurement series. And then um, many or uh, multiple of these uh, series can, uh, uh, can be uh, one data set. And in addition to previously mentioned metadata, uh, you will have also the authors of the data set and uh, maybe further uh, references as well. So, um, the metadata are then searchable at each of these levels in Pangea, and um, and um, you can um, and and make sure that you can um, combine data from uh, related data sets um, in a let's say comfortable way. Uh, we also have um, an own tool in Pangea, which is called Data Warehouse. Um, which uh, makes it possible to aggregate um, data from several uh, or from multiple data sets. So um, we don't have time to describe this in detail in, in this workshop, but um, go to Pangea uh, and find out for yourself what data warehouse is and if it can be useful for you for extracting data from Pangea. And um, 
if you uh, are interested in more depth, uh, you can join us uh, during the find and access data workshop uh, in the spring, probably in May next year, where we are devoting more time to extracting data from Pangea. Right, so, but um, basically all these metadata are important for that um, data sets coming from different, um, uh, sorry, data co coming from different data sets are interoperable and reusable together. So uh, we'll have a look at the, at several examples of uh, data sets now. And I'll start with a, a very classical example, tabular data set from OVEP field measurement um, and show and show you where the metadata can be found there. So um, this would be a data set um, of continuous thermal uh, salinograph oceanography along a meteor uh, cruise um, published in 2022 in Pangaea. So this is the data table. Um, it's um, basically what was measured here. It's uh, it was temperature and salinity or uh, conductivity and ca uh, salinity was calculated from that during one uh, research cruise. It was like a continuous measurement every um, every a minute or so. You get one data point and it goes uh, over several days during the cruise. Um, so this is a screenshot of the data set presentation at Pangea website, and it's very small. I know I just want to show you some blocks that you can actually see in this data set. So it's the data itself at the very bottom, the data table. Um, it's uh, uh, the parameter table, which provides metadata about the method and device, and as well as PI. So the um, measured parameters and units. Um, they are also, uh, of course, um, contained in this parameter table. They are also contained in the table itself, but in a very um, compressed way. They are just uh, the acronyms there. Then uh, on the top, you have the citation that provides the information about the authors um, and, and the title, for example, from which expedition this data comes from. and. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of additional information that depends on what kind of data you have, but always uh, for each data set, we are collecting an abstract, which provides a description. Then uh, it's also optional to have some additional comment on top of the abstracts. Then you can have uh, metadata about funding, uh, about uh, words that were um, used for um, for creating this data, as well as projects that uh, this data were um, created this within, and um, all kinds of references, publication reports, um, and um, other related data sets links. Now, zooming in the parameter table, you can see that this contains a uh, full name uh, of the parameter for each of the columns in the table and a standardized short name and unit. So these uh, are those um, created by us uh, and these parameter names and units uh, come from our parameter catalog um, in Pangea. They are also uh, often um, uh, connected to external terminologies with with the links. So then we have so-called geocodes describing where and when on Earth these um, uh, data were taken. So latitude, longitude, daytime, and uh, the often the third dimension. In this case. Uh, uh, depth of water. So in this data set, the device was installed on a ship. So the depth is always the same, um, several meters underwater, but it's important to also specify it um, for con context of the, the measurements. So. And uh, the information about who. So basically um, for each of the columns in a table, uh, there can be one PI responsible up to one person. So for each of the columns, it can be a different person. And uh, the method, um, again, so description of the device in this case, or maybe calculation method linked to a paper used for calculation. And um, these um, 
these uh, items are also standardized within Pangea and often connected to external terminologies as well. So the links are providing the users with additional metadata and uh, context. So, and uh, this is uh, a zoom um, picture to, to the metadata um, header of this data set. We are still working with the same data set and we'll see that, um, uh, yeah, we have here uh, several related publications. Um, so on one hand, we have um, the CRUISE report connected to this as related to. So you can, uh, you can read the report to see the context of this um, oceanographic measurement. Then um, we have a special um, item data processing report, which is uh, published externally. Um, no, it's it's uh, actually this is a document that is uh, that is uh, published direct like uh, that is saved directly with Pangea. So you can for data processing like for documents like this, you can also um, submit a, a PDF file which we can store with us and link to um, to the data set. Then we have standard operation procedure. That's the document that is. Um, store uh, that is published externally, in this case at the Nodo. And we can also add another document, like in this case, it's further details and it's simply a file providing further information that was important for the authors or for the community that um, is related to this data set. Um, events usually is a list of maybe stations or measurement points where this happened in this case uh, of uh, continuous measurement during a cruise like this. It's uh, it's an underway event, so it has a start and end and uh, in between uh, it's just uh, measurement during the whole, not the whole time, but it provides also um, further information about the device uh, thermosalinograph and it can be also opened and more information can be extracted also from external sources. All right, so if you submit field measurements uh, data like this in the form of a table, the obligatory metadata that we will ask from you is time and location in three dimensions is the location. And then uh, oftentimes it's really important for you to also provide the device and methods and um, authors and principal investigators for each of the times uh, of each of the data series. Obst abstract is uh, compulsory data description, um, Maybe if you are using quality flags, then uh, um, description what these quality flags mean. So, so basically the whole table must be understandable without like reading a paper re related to this data set. And uh, additional metadata like um, like the original uh, station labels, for example, if these are not available, we can come up with solutions. We can maybe uh, um, create such event labels if this is not the way that the da data were originally created. But um, your, uh, additionally, you can link your data set to a project or to funding award. Um, so in that case, we need the funder and the um, the ID of the or or the funding number of of the award. Mm, yeah, then uh, a set of related publications and reports that you want to um, associate with the data and uh, maybe information about related data set that are important. And the reason why we are collecting all these data is that in the end, the user of uh, this data set will be able to understand the origin of the measurements and uh, analysis procedure. In order to help you to start a submission, um, you can go to um, Pangea Wiki and look under best practice manuals and templates, which uh, is a link at the um, um, main page and then um, you will be taken to a website which is a, a list which provides uh, on one hand a, a generic uh, template in a form of a spreadsheet as well as um, text files but we also uh, for different communities that we serve a prepared um, domain specific um, 
templates and data descriptions, uh, which um, will remind you of the most important things to think about and uh, with um, uh, specific templates for these kinds of data. Yeah, welcome back. So, um, in this first part of this presentation, we looked at the um, example of the field measurements and we looked at it very much in detail. And we have still a long list of different types of or common types of data that we have in Pangea to go. But um, don't worry, I will not, not bore you with all the same things for each of the uh, data type. I will just now concentrate on the main differences. Um, because uh, in the first, uh, we very much looked into detail. So what is special about other types of data we have? So the next one, we'll have a look at the uh, and a data set of a, that was created uh, during a laboratory experiment. So here, um, um, the data set is about an experiment uh, about heat weight tolerance of um, kind of algae, a kind of kelp. Um, and um, you can see again uh, the data table, um, the main data uh, in this data set. So um, exactly. So these are numbers uh, with, uh, with a header um, characterizing the parameters and units. Uh, and these parameter and unit details are then um, also um, part of the parameter table. So it's all the same like with experiment measurements, only like we have maybe some special parameters for this kind of data. But what is important metadata is the geocode of the experiment. In this, data, uh, in this uh, case, it's about the time during um, the experiment. So. Um, it's it's difficult to assign latitude and longitude in this case uh, because uh, it, it's the laboratory doesn't tell us much, but important is time during the experiment. But um, still, somehow the location might be relevant, especially if the original organism um, was taken for this experiment from um, some uh, existing location. So. Um, in this case, um, this can be uh, put in as a sampling event. So the divers went out um, to North Sea near Helgoland and um, sampled um, this uh, algae uh, at certain locations, at, at certain time, at, at certain depth. And this all can be recorded in the events. Uh, which we consider very important metadata for these kind of data. And what happened in the laboratory with these samples then, um, here the, the maybe time is very important. So, and um, um, these special types of metadata um, provide the um, users of these data, information about the origin of the sample for the experiment, and uh, about the time that passed before the use in the experiment and of the duration of the experiment as well. So um, at our wiki, we have um, under the site I, I told you about the best practices, we have a um, special page about biological data and a special section about laboratory experiments. And then uh, you can uh, follow the template, um, which should guide you what kind of metadata and in which format um, you should submit your data. Um, another important um, type of uh, data sets we published are literature compilations. These are types of data that can come virtually from any type of um, natural sciences. And um, so the auth uh, the author of such a data set um, might and might not do some 
measurements or observation themselves, but a large part of this data set comes from originally published literature. And obviously, this uh, is uh, something that um, needs to be acknowledged in this case. So very important part of this uh, such data sets um, would be um, the link to, re to the original publication. So you might, the, the table might be actually exactly the same uh, as uh, any other table we were talking about so far. So it would be uh, some columns with metadata and then the measurement or calculated values. But in addition, we need uh, the source data. So, and these could, be uh, these should be actually whenever uh, available um, equipped with the DOI of the original work and so if, um, in the end um, all of these references can be listed in the metadata header of the data set and obviously this is important um, to um, to acknowledge the origin of the uh, the me measurement or experiment and the um, credit the original work because um, the new data set is based on on some previously published data so of course it's good scientific practice to um, refer these uh, to reference these original data so and to submit data like this you just uh, can use any um, of the templates we provide at the wiki page and um, add the column, the relevant columns with the source of the original data. Okay, so um, this would be about all I would like to say about uh, tabular data. And um, then I would like to concentrate of to what we call binary data. So. Typical examples of such binary data would be images or um, maybe raw data, um, which are stored in some different formats, uh, but not in a form of um, uh, these classical Pangea tables like I showed you before. And in case of uh, these binary data, okay, this is an example of an image file. And each of these images is basically stored in Pangea as a data point. So it's a little bit um, weird concept to get used to, but uh, you basically have uh, um, this data set to be published as a table with some metadata and descriptions and everything like this. And each of these, um, files would be linked as a data point. So this is um, a data set of seabed photographs uh, from a Polar 10 expedition. Um, so when it comes to common uh, image um, files, uh, so they, they are at Pangea presented um, with a little thumbnail, uh, but of course, these binaries can be also uh, downloaded individually or um, all of uh, all of them from one data set as a bulk. Um, yeah, but um, here in this uh, example of this table, so you would have daytime, latitude and longitude and uh, water depth. And then um, there is the picture and additional text file in which um, you can describe these um, data mm more uh, in detail. So this would be, I think, a good uh, example to what we were discussing in a question and answer session yesterday, when we were talking about um, maybe image data that can be used for machine learning. So this would be a kind of format that uh, we would use for this type of data in Pangea. Um, so this is a screenshot of the um, parameter table just with more detail. So basically in the column of image, there would be the in the file name um, and link and um, binary object in this case, uh, or it can also be called text file, uh, would be additional metadata uh, file related to this data set. Each of the columns can again have a PI as uh, other previous data. So what 
what was measured or what was observed, uh, by whom, and then uh, important even when it comes to um, binary data like this, like pictures or or movies, uh, they um, should be also individually characterized by a set of uh, latitude, longitude, third um, geocode, like depth in water, for example, and um, date and time. Uh, in addition, there can be a, a method description. This, uh, in this case, the device is called Ocean Floor Observation and Bathymetry System, or FORBS. And um, all these metadata, um, of course, um, serve to trace the time and origin of the images. So even if um, these uh, data points are images, we are always in Pangea interested in the geolocation. Mm, also for this type of data, um, we have a submission template. So this uh, mainly concentrate on the metadata, like the position and time. And um, uh, yeah, so during the submission, uh, you would typically ask for an upload link and um, and all the images can be uh, uploaded to Pangea through a special web interface. Another common type of uh, binary data are raw data formats. So again, in the data table, you can see these were coming from different events, like different stations of a polar stern. Uh, and uh, for each of the station, you have several types of uh, raw data um, types, uh, oceanograph or physical oceanography. So you also have a, a content column, which uh, provides uh, basic information what the content of the individual files is. Mm, yeah, the size of the binary so that you have an idea how much time it will take to download this data. And then, um, yeah, like with the pictures, each of the data points um, would be basically one, one of these files which can be downloaded um, from Pangea either individually or as a bulk for the whole data set. Well, and uh, the metadata that you are asked to provide are again uh, similar, but in this case uh, of raw um, data, it's really important to describe especially the file content, which um, mm, provides us a little bit more information. Uh, it can also, in case of raw data, it could also be important to provide information how exactly to use the data with which software, maybe a link to free software that you can um, work with the data to, yeah, because sometimes it's uh, it, can, it can be quite obscure, but um, this kind of information is very relevant for reuse. Otherwise, uh, it's re not really fair. And obviously, uh, latitude, longitude, and daytime serves for the traceability of the origin of the measurement. Origin of the measurements. Also, um, under the binary objects uh, wiki page um, in Pangea, we have a special um, template for raw CTT files that you can reuse for any kind of um, raw data submissions. <clears throat> 